this year. And uh, Eddie Adcock and, and Tom Gray and Charlie Waller and John Duffy were a lot of people that maybe you don't know about, but if you go back and listen to the records, you'll see why they were like, they were the first new grass revival uh, in bluegrass music. They broke down a lot of barriers and changed all, of, all the things that songs were sung about. You know, they were right, they came on right at the end of what we call the folk scare as well. <laughs> They recorded Dylan songs, and they were just pulling from different sources, but it was a whole new, whole new thing. Yeah, it, and yeah, and the, so the subject matter was different in the songs, and they were funny. They were really funny, all of them. I mean, Eddie Adcock would walk out on stage and start flexing uh, for the audience, and, and that was a new thing. Bill Monroe didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I, I think, um, you know, if this were an hour and a half that we had here, we could touch on these stories and these connections. I just want to say, again, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Dope Bros tuned to Open G, and it is a is a master, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a, it requires a master to be able to play that instrument in multiple keys. So Jerry writes songs in B minor using the, I mean, maybe you just play a little bit of Push Too Far, even though that was my nemesis when I was going to play. Uh, but it's in. Well, it, it, it depends on what key we're, uh... yeah, that's, that's what I was thing. thinking. This, 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 supposedly, I tell the story that we, uh, Russ Berenberg and I wrote this song in my basement uh, and the, to, to play the first, uh, to enter the note contest that we were entering, a Weezer uh, note contest, we had to have 25 notes in the first measure. And this, this one, uh, counting, counting the and at the front, it has 25 notes. Uh, I'm not going to count them on right now, but... Uh, Don't count that. But, uh, don't, don't count it. Don't even learn it. Don't even learn it. Don't even look at it. <laughs> but it's it's a, it's a you know I, I write these things and they're phrases actually. I mean I don't write them out in a in a particular time signature or anything like that. But I, I'm a little warped in that area. But, but give me an example of another thing you do uh, in a different key using open strings. Strings like uh, uh, there's a new there's a song on my new record that's totally wacky. It should, shouldn't make any any sense at all. But I, it started out as an exercise, and, and it starts in E flat. But it's, I have e flat. Sense, but, yeah. but once you put a band with it and uh, sure all that stuff, <laughs> <Blame it on. laughs> I, I knew when I said e. I didn't say E7, I said E, and I knew that would blow your mind. So, yeah, okay, okay, sorry. It's, it's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen. All right, I just um, I want to ask uh, a couple more things before we get back to just playing some music, and we don't have that much time, but. Uh, Jerry is famous for uh, playing on people's records. He is one of the most recorded oh. instrumentalists in the world. And it includes records by people like Ray Charles, Eric Clapton, uh, Dolly Parton, uh, Elvis Costello. Amy and, Yeah, Amy Lou, there's gazillions of them. And, um, and, and Hot Rise. And Hot Rise. He's the only, he's the only guest musician we've ever had on a Hot Rise record. In almost 40 years, he's the only guy. Um, but I will also just say that one of the, the reasons is that Jerry understands melody in such a beautiful way and, a, and I think a unique way. So when a singer-songwriter is playing, he finds a way to contribute to the song in a way that works beautifully. And I, I don't know if we can have time for an example, but I don't think he did. But I just want to let, I just, this is just about you, Jerry. We're just, just put a little love on you and it's okay. Well, it, it, what, I, what I do is try, try to add 
to what the singer is doing and not detract and try to find it. I, of all these recordings, my main goal was to leave it better than I found it. Right? Yeah. And, uh, I know that was only my opinion, you know, but, but uh, I, I kind of looked around the room and everybody's nodding, yes, so I, yeah, I, okay, then I guess I'm doing that. But but that's that that's the art of being a, a recording a, a studio musician. Yeah. Learning fast and coming up with ideas and hooks and things like that. And making it better. Yeah. Contributing. Uh, listen, I think we got time for like two songs and then we're gonna have to be, be kind of done. Man, we gotta have to. We, we yeah. need we need. What about the story of us driving through uh, Wyoming? That was a good one. Or. Uh, Nick was driving. Tim, Tim and uh, O'Brien and Nick and I were in the in the car, and, and uh, Nick was driving, and, and I somehow laughed off to sleep for a little while. I woke up, and I thought I, I, I thought he hit a jackrabbit and then screamed. And uh, I don't. Uh, there were some other things going on. I can't it, sort of like, it turned into sort of like if there was a Disney movie, and if there was an opposite of a Disney movie, like a dark evil Disney movie where all the animals come at you at night. That's kind of what I experienced. It was kind of like Dumb and Dumber plus one. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we just, uh, I will say that uh, Festi has done a good job of providing an opportunity for this community to come together. It's the community of both you and musicians. And for us, these are lifelong connections and friendships. And, um, and I feel particularly you know, fortunate to have made such a good connection with Stella right here. Jerry Douglas is one of the good ones here, folks. Um, what do you want to